Sometimes I've been feeling a little bit in over my head. started and I don't know it was just so much so first of all um, our house in the city is sold which we are extremely grateful for but it meant that we were moving out January 14th we were really really lucky because the week before January 14th was such a cold and miserable week and the weather warmed up for us just a little bit so it was easier to move so then once we, we moved in, just starting to maybe get settled, and then COVID hit our house. We were all out with COVID for the week, thankfully. Everything was mild, but you can probably hear my voice. Um, I'm actually still recovering. I've been negative for a long time, but um, I'm just having troubles with my voice. So that's also why I haven't been recording regular YouTube videos for you. Between the move and the sickness, and then, you know, it wasn't just our family that got COVID, our babysitter's family got COVID. I don't think from us. It's been hard trying to like land and work things out with just inconsistent daycare, um, having to stay home, all the transition, all the chaos. So um, feels like I'm coming into 2022 and um, feeling a little bit low, but the good news is things are on the upswing. Even though it's winter, a flower farmer's work is never really over. You have about that downtime in November and then in December you're already starting eucalyptus and lysianthus seeds. You're planning out your year. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, we're no longer shifting roots in bloom. We are shifting blooms. So we made that change over the winter. I think it'll be a good idea for us. Just a little bit simpler to say, easier for website and SEO. And you know what? It's getting cold out here. Train's coming. Let's talk a little bit more inside about all the changes for Shifting Blooms and my backyard business. So the first exciting thing is I now have an office in this house, which is so exciting. And it's really great to have a dedicated grow room. There'll actually be two grow rooms. Um, I've already almost filled up these two shelves and to be able to shut the door is just so huge and seems like such a step up in my business. So first let's take a little tour of what I've got going on already. This year I'm doing two successions of Lysianthus. So this one is the first succession that got planted around Christmas time. And then this is the second succession. You can even just see they're like just starting to germinate here. Mostly this doesn't look super exciting. And this I'm hoping to have flowers by Canadian Thanksgiving. In non-flower news, we have some onions, which yikes, now that I look at them, they definitely need a watering. Um, back to flowers, eucalyptus. I just recently bumped up this set of eucalyptus. And since I did and gave it some fertilizer, it's looking so, so much happier. So really, excited about having a decent amount of eucalyptus over here. I woke up half of my dahlias in January because they weren't stored great so they were not doing well and they're starting to get blooms so I've just been or not blooms I guess shoots um, I've been watering them basically every day I just miss them with a spray bottle and we're just starting to get some shoots here it's like right there so this is really exciting. Taking cuttings is a big part of my strategy this year with trying to increase my dahlia stock. If you've tried buying dahlias recently, you know tubers are expensive. And I mean, it's not really even the grower's fault. It's like by the time you add in the shipping and um, the, just the dahlia shortage of tubers in general and the increased demand, like I don't blame them for charging what they have to charge. But because I just, I don't want to spend my money there, especially because I'm not really certain what all my favorite tubers are. And I'm still in that experimental phase. I am going to increase my stock mostly by cuttings, which is part of the reason why I've pulled my stuff out so early. Any of you who are watching this and thinking, oh no, I'm behind, you're not behind at all. Um, if you're just growing dahlias for the sake of growing dahlias, you actually don't need to take your dahlias out. You can do it right when it's time to plant them, or you can do it about a month, six weeks earlier whatever you like. You can see a few of my early spring experiments are starting to come up. I am beyond excited that this is working. So I know what you're probably thinking, Kristen, why are you starting these plants 
so early? Like you're in zone three, are they going to die? The answer is no, they are actually not going to die. So last year what happened is I had a brand partnership and a bride that had a wedding and well partnership in um, late June, possibly early July, which if you grow in zone three, you know, your flowers, your cut flowers really haven't generally started yet. So I told both groups that I didn't know if I could do it, but I would try my best and I would experiment and see if I could get something blooming during that time period a little bit earlier. And I actually did it. Now I made a lot of mistakes. I lost a lot of plants and I was fully prepared to use a lot of plants. But I think using the stuff that I learned last year, that maybe it actually is possible for those of us in zone three to have some cut flowers in June. And I know, I know like that sounds like heresy, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to show you all if I can do it. <laughs> and then maybe, who knows, at some point it'll be standard practice. But, you know, you've got to have the courage to try. Speaking of pushing the envelope, this is my first succession of ranunculus and anemones. These are for an early May wedding. I am fully expecting and have prepared my bride that this will not work out. But I am going to try it and see what happens. Speaking of weddings, let's chat a little bit about what Shifting Blooms has going on this year. So the first exciting thing is I've already booked six weddings, which is all of the amount of weddings that I did last year. These weddings are also generally a bit bigger than the ones I did last year. Everything last year was of course a COVID wedding. So most of the time the order was for like the bride's bouquet, the groom's boutonniere, and maybe a few extras, almost never centerpieces. But um, the weddings are definitely getting back to like pre-COVID size. I do suspect that I'll book, I'm hoping at least four more so I can say I have a nice number of 10 weddings. Probably some of those will still be last minute as you know, the world's a crazy place right now. So who knows what's happening? Another thing I'm really excited for is I do want to offer bucket nights again. Um, I don't think I'm going to have super regular bucket nights though. Um, you know what, there's other people around where I live who do it and they do it really well. I think for me and my bucket nights, um, anyone who's coming to my bucket night wants to do so because they want to learn how I arrange and they just think they, they want to meet me. Like I don't see myself as a destination per se, but I think maybe I'll offer like four max is sort of what I have in my head. Like last year, I believe I'm gonna do pop-up sales again, but now that I'm out in the country, it's not quite so easy to like have a place for people to come pick up. So that's definitely something I have to look into, see if any of my friends are willing to be a hosting location or experiment with saying, these are this week's offerings they get picked up at X time in X location and see what happens with it. So just a short little update video for you today. Um, I'm actually doing my first wedding of 2022 this week. I am so excited. The only unfortunate thing is because, you know, it's the depths of winter. I had to order flowers, obviously. Like there's, there's nothing I can grow, but I am definitely recording the process. I am taking you on the journey with me. So I cannot wait to show you that video. As well, I have a fun promotion with West Coast Seeds coming up. I am one of their brand ambassadors this year, and that will be the video that I'm making next. I cannot wait. I have really missed making videos for you guys, and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.